are now joined by CP, the franchise of Knicks Fan TV. And CP, we just heard from Josh Hart. What type of intangibles does Hart bring to the table for the Knicks that can change the game? Eamon, good to be on with you. Last week, I spoke to former Knicks play-by-play -play announcer Gus Johnson, and he said that Josh Hart reminded him of former Knicks hero John Starks because of the way that they leave it all out there on the court to be the heart and soul of the team, and that is a guy that the Knicks fans have embraced. On the court, he's also a connector. Nine assists in that Game 2 victory over the Heat. He just has a way of getting other guys involved and is very selfless with the ball. His rebounding skills were also on display. Four key rebounds in that Knicks fourth quarter leading their run to beat the Heat and also even though he started off slow in that game he did knock down two big three pointers in the fourth quarter and so while he wasn't efficient he hit two timely shots and he was a big factor in getting the Knicks to victory yeah and the jersey number certainly adds to the Starks comparisons as well yeah. all right CP three days off between games two and game three with two veteran coaches what type of adjustments do you think Tom Thibodeau and Eric Spolster will make before game three for Tibbs, it's trying to slow down this high-octane three-point attack from the Miami Heat. The Knicks did not do a good job of that in Game 2. I think they need to look to close out on the three-point shooters a little bit more, maybe consider switching more on the pick-and-roll to make sure that they are intact with these shooters. Also, be prepared for the return of Jimmy Butler in Miami's Game 1 victory over the Knicks. Butler, although he wasn't shooting the ball particularly well, he did find his ways to get points. He was getting into the gaps of that Knicks defense, leaking out into to transition getting to the free throw line which he does best so the Knicks have got to know where he is at all times and turn him into a shooter on the other side for Eric Spolstra he's going to look to keep the Knicks out of the paint the Knicks scored 62 points in the paint in game two in their game two victory that is their strong point that is their number one skill set so maybe Spolstra goes to more zone defense to try to keep the Knicks pe dribble penetrators out of the paint to and 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 risk giving up the threes and daring the Knicks to beat them from three. Additionally, Spolster's going to look to take away the head of the snake, and that is Jalen Brunson. One way to do, to do that is to make him work on the defensive end. We know that Jalen Brunson's defense is not his strong point. Also, in the fourth quarter where he is at his best, I think you can expect to see Jimmy Butler guarding Jalen Brunson in crunch time. Brunson only scoring two out of eight field goal attempts against Butler in their game one matchup. So those are the two matchups. Those are the two adjustments I think these coaches will make yeah you mentioned Butler a couple of times obviously his health will be a huge factor in game three all right game two was the first time Emmanuel Quickly's minutes were really cut by Tibbs do the Knicks need quickly to figure it out here in order to beat the heat Nine minutes in game two was such watch for Emmanuel quickly, an NBA six man of the year candidate. But you have you have to be encouraged by the play of Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett in games one and two has found some shooting efficiency. Julius Randle was great in his return from the ankle injury, but they will need quickly to give their bench a boost. Every game is different, and you're not gonna know what to expect from night in to night out. So they will need quickly to give them a boost. I like this lineup here, Eamon. Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly, Josh Hart. Julius Randle and Isaiah Hartenstein let's move quickly a little bit more off ball see if he can get into more of a shooting rhythm more into a rhythm on the offensive end and have him playing off of four capable passes and playmakers in that lineup I think we'll see some good things